We begin with the bushfire crisis gripping the nation. Authorities fear two massive blazes burning either side of the New South Wales-Victoria border could now merge into what they're describing as potentially a mega blaze. The two fires are the Coriong Fire in Victoria and the Duns Road Fire in the Snowy Mountains region. We have reporters either side of the border this morning. Firstly, let's go live to Gabriella Power at the Victoria State Control Centre. Gab, there's real concern about these fires merging Merging. Danica, the fire burning through Coriong in Victoria's northeast has crossed the border into New South Wales and it could just be days away from merging with the fires in New South Wales, which would cause a mega blaze between the two states. Now, authorities say if this does happen, they'll need to deploy an aircraft to fly over the area to confirm when these fires have merged. Let's take a listen to authorities now. The two fires have the potential to merge in the, the coming days. We are fortunate that right at the moment we have some uh, more benign conditions weather-wise, but as the week continues to heat up, we'll see that uh, minimal rain that we've seen on those fires start to evaporate and things will uh, reignite in some of those areas and we'll see those two fires, we believe, merging uh, in the coming days. There's every likelihood that it will still uh, make its way our way given the weather conditions that are forecast over the coming days and some of those fire areas joining up. Uh, but the close collaboration between us and Victoria uh, means that we're aware of that, uh, we're positioning for that and we're prepared for that. Fourteen fires are still active in Victoria and the reason that number is so much smaller than what we've seen in the past few days is because many of the blazes have already merged. All fires that were burning at an emergency warning level have been downgraded and there are 13 watch and acts in place. So far, more than 1.2 million hectares of land has been burnt in Victoria and more than 200 properties have been destroyed. A big focus for authorities today will be to get into isolated communities and to set up communication. We know that there are still 18 isolated communities in East Gippsland. Today, firefighters will be facing milder conditions and the big concern is for later in the week where we're going to see temperatures soar again into the 40s. A busy few days for firefighters as they do prepare, prepare for that weather. Gab, thank you for the update. And Stella Todorovic is in Mogo. Stella, the death toll in New South Wales has climbed to 20. That's right, Danica. A 71-year-old man has been found dead on a property just south of here at Nerangunda. He had last been seen alive on New Year's Eve before his home was cut off by these fires. Authorities were finally able to get inside the property yesterday to assess the damage, and that's when they made the sad discovery. He was found between his car and his home, quite obviously trying to get away from this fire. This brings the death toll to 20 here in New South Wales since the start of this bushfire season, this very deadly and dangerous bushfire season. Tragically, eight of those deaths here on the south coast and in southern parts of New South Wales in just one week when we saw those fires really flare up just before New Year's Eve and then again on Saturday. RFS Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmons says that crews are still trying to assess exactly how many properties have been lost or damaged, but that number seems to be rapidly increasing. They're still not completed uh, by, by no means, uh, but, but uh, the southeast corner of the state, uh, uh, we, we're, we're now counting up to just over 600 homes uh, have been destroyed as a result of the fires uh, in the last uh, week or so. So it's, it, it's a devastating result. It's a tragic result uh, down in southeast New South Wales. Danica, here in Mogo, the entire town is still without power and roads are still blocked as a result of these fires. Crews will be taking advantage of the more favourable conditions that we are seeing to try to get ahead of the thousands of kilometres of active fire edge that's still burning here in New South Wales. They're conducting backburns and trying to strengthen containment lines ahead of worsening conditions this weekend. It was cooler yesterday. It's already starting to heat up here in Mogo today, so it's just a sign of the warmer weather that is yet to come. So probably a quite a nervous couple of days ahead for not just the crews, but also the residents here in Mogo and the surrounding regions. Another anxious wait for residents. Stella, thank you for the update.